Hello, welcome back to the Dinner Table Project. I'm Miss Donna Propes from Cecilia Valley Elementary School. The Dinner Table Project started last year with Lakewood and Cecilia Valley and several other Hardin County schools. And the idea behind the project is to encourage families to eat at least one meal a week together, electronic free. And um, if, as you remember, we sent out flyers about this program. And if you wanted your families to participate, we were going to give you a box. And this is the box that has dinner table conversation starters on it. But the idea is to put all your electronics, phones, TVs, whatever, completely shut off for the night and have a dinner with your family. So tonight we have a special guest with us. Her name is Marsha Butterworth, and she is going to be sharing her chicken casserole recipe. here with Marsha Butterworth and she is going to be sharing her chicken casserole recipe. Marsha, tell us, us a little bit about your job that you do at the Hardin County Soil Conservation Office. Um, like Donna said, I do work at the Hardin County Conservation Office and um, we do a lot of work with farmers uh, improving their land and I do a lot of work with kids in the schools. Uh, we sponsor the art and writing contest every year. We have a huge banquet. Um, due to COVID, of course, that hasn't happened, but I go into the schools and do a lot of work. I've been at Donna's school and Cherish's school several times and working with the kids, and I enjoy that. So I was uh, thankful that they asked me to come back again. Tonight, we're gonna do the chicken casserole. I'll tell you what the ingredients are first, and then we'll start into making it. Uh, the first uh, ingredient is three 12 and a half ounce cans of chicken breast. Um, I just buy it at the store. Um, and then there's two 14 and a half ounces uh, cans of chicken broth, a can of cream of celery soup, a can of cream of chicken soup, a stick of margarine, and a small package of the herb stuffing mix. Uh, the first thing you do is you take your butter and you uh, melt it in the microwave. And then uh, while it's melted in the microwave, I just take the chicken, um, I spray the pan first so it doesn't stick with any kind of, uh, the, this is um, just cooking spray. And then you just put the cans of chicken in the bottom of the pan. As far as the chicken, you can put either more or less, but I think uh, three cans that size is a good amount to kind of cover the bottom. And you can um, kind of cut it up with the, the uh, spoon. Make sure you have it covered pretty good. And then you mix the soups with the chicken broth. I definitely think this is something your children could help you with in the yes. in the kitchen. It's uh, it would be an easy recipe to involve your kids. You could talk uh, to them about the importance of healthy eating and getting involved with uh, meal preparing. Then you set this over to the side, and then I'll take the herb dressing, and you mix it in with the butter. Okay, and then you put the stuffing first. And 
and then uh, you pour your soups in. Marsha, for this recipe, could you add extra stuff to it if you wanted to? Like maybe if you wanted cheese on top or if you wanted extra onions or peppers or anything like that in it? Would that I those? would think you could, yes. Yeah. I haven't, but... Um, mushrooms, can of mushrooms. Yes, so probably a can of mushrooms would be good in it. Uh -huh. Yep. The cheese, I would probably do after it's baked, mm -hmm. and I would kind of melt the cheese in there. Okay. Um, I forgot to tell you that you should preheat your oven to 350. And our oven is preheated, so we're going to stick it in and uh, let it bake for around an hour. So we'll check it maybe in 45 minutes and see if it's finished. After an hour of baking, this is what your finished product will look like. We thought of some different things to go with your chicken casserole. We thought marsh mashed potatoes and green beans or peas would be a, a great side item for your casserole. We appreciate Miss Butterworth sharing her recipe with us tonight, and we look forward to many more recipes on the Family Dinner Table Project. Thank you for joining us again tonight for the Dinner Table Project. My name is Cheris Calden. I'm the Family Resource Center Coordinator at Lakewood Elementary. We have collaborated on this event with Cecilia Valley, Ms. Donna Propes, who's the uh, Family Resource Center Coordinator there at Cecilia Valley. Tonight, we are going to have a great time with Tony Williams. She is um, going and is making a um, fruit salad. So it is, like I say, very healthy and I can't wait to really eat it. Also, I want to remind you about the, uh, the box that you've been receiving. Uh, if you've signed up for this program, you should have received this box. And this is the box where you put the electronics. So mom, dad, grandparents, kids, grandkids, put all electronic devices in this box at least one time a week while having dinner with your family. And on this box, there are conversational pieces as well. And uh, we also will be giving you a link to the actual dinner table newsletter in which you can look up recipes. There are additional talking topics for your elementary, your middle, and your high school. So, without any further ado, I will turn it over to Ms. Williams. Hello. My name is Tony Williams. I am here, the SNAP Ed Assistant at the Hardin County Extension Office. And I work with families, um, working with them to make better food choices, cooking healthier meals. Uh, a lot of them think that um, Cooking healthy is expensive, but it's only just changing the way that you are cooking. So with the Dinner Table Project, we partnered together to come up with, you know, ideas and recipes to have the family to look at um, doing. Uh, my recipe for tonight is uh, easy fruit salad, which I have is yogurt, uh, mandarin oranges, pineapples, and some fruit cocktail. So we're improvising. Usually it's supposed to have pina colada yogurt or pineapple yogurt, to, but we're gonna make it work tonight. So with that being said, it also has some diced apples and bananas also for this. This recipe would um, be good for a after dinner snack, after school snack. Um, it's easy, it has fruits um, in it. And, you know, and it'll keep away from, you know, wanting the chips, the cookies and 
all of those other things. So I already chopped up my bananas and my apples. So I'm gonna mix them in the, in the bowl, put them in the bowl. So now I'm gonna take my yogurt and I'm gonna get, that should be about a, a cup, ooh, full. And I'm gonna go ahead and mix it with the apples and, and the bananas that are in the, in the bowl. And it also would work if you drain the fruit, the juice off the fruit first. Just dump the, the pineapples in. We'll drain the, the juice off the mandarin oranges. Dump those in. And we'll drain the, the juice off of the fruit cocktail. And then this time of the year, Make sure that we have plenty, plenty of fruits and vegetables to help build our immune system with everything that's going on. So, and I know a lot of fruit is out of season now, but then there's always the frozen or the canned ones that you can purchase also. And you probably even, you could put some, maybe some pecans up in here or walnuts or something to give it a little salty, sweet and salty taste. And then if you like a lot of color, you can get some the, um, cherries that are in the jar and add them in here to give it a little bit more, more color. But this is just an easy fruit salad. Like I say, it's a good snack for the, for the kids. It's a good, um, if you have an event that you're going to, you can also take this, it'd be something quick, mix it in a bowl, let it chill, and it could be like one of the desserts on the table when you're out at a picnic. And so, and once again, if there's any questions or anything that you need, recipes, um, snap information, feel free to call me here at the Extension Office and I'll be glad to help you. And if I can't, I can point you in the direction that someone can. And y'all have a good night.